two, one, go. I'm Trey Byther. I'm Derek Wynn. I'm Navali Shukla. And I'm Alia Chopra. And this is Overcoming the Stigma of Disabilities. So Ludwig Government in the Paralympics. Hi, my name is Ludwig Government, and I was born in Toss, Germany in 1899. And I have a dream of becoming a neurosurgeon. Hello, esteemed interviewer Arthur Forrester. Let me tell you about my past experiences. I first volunteered at the Hospital of Accidents in Konigsham at the age of 18. One year later, I started my medical studies at the University of Freiburg, where I researched neurology. Government's experience helped him get hired, and he went to work with the most renowned and leading neurologist at the time, Professor Alfred Forrester, in the medical hospital at Verslo. With Forrester, he was given the opportunity to learn things most were not able to under the most prestigious of doctors. So Ludwig Gutmann broke the barriers of stigma and judgment towards those with disabilities by founding the Paralympics and using the philosophy of sports for rehabilitation. His actions led to a more humane perspective on how doctors should rehabilitate their patients and a further acceptance of those with disabilities at a time when society found upon such. He created the Paralympics to be an empowering place where people could be accepted for who they are. Gutmann's opportunity to escape the persecution of Jews arrived when the Nazis gave him a visa to travel to Portugal to treat a Portuguese statesman. He was ordered to return to Germany through London. However, the Council for Assisting Refugees Academics organized for him to stay in London, where he continued his spinal cord injury research at the Newfield Department of Neurosurgery. What are we supposed to do? With the rising casualties coming in from World War II, how will we fit our own to hospitals? Well, we may have to open a new one. But who will run it? I know just the man, so Ludwig Gutmann. But isn't he a German? Well, he defected back in 1939, lost the country, and arrived at Oxford. Well, that settles it. Sir Ludwig Gutmann will be the primary physician at the Stoke Medical Hospital for War Veterans. More than 40,000 of us patients are locked away because we're considered feeble-minded and morally defective. Many families that have kids who are disabled send them off to schools and care homes where they are barely acknowledged, depriving them of caring family and homes. These children aren't allowed to talk to each other or even put on comfortable bed clothes at night. If a child does something wrong, then the nurses hold them underwater in a bathtub until they start turning blue. Others are holed up in jail-like cells. This is the case in many such hospitals around the world. Signed, Jenny Morris. In other hospitals, practices are limited to immobile bed risk. But this is detrimental to the health. There must be another way. Hi, I'm Dr. Gover. May I try something? Yes, sir. How do you feel? I feel what was stiff than before, but I'm still in much pain. Okay, turning is going well, but the patient is still in pain. However, I think the stiffness has lessened. But there must be alternatives to turning. What about recreation activities, like sports? Sir, that sounds terrific, but how? Well, instead of being confined to the bed, wheelchairs will allow you to move around and advance freely. Gummy got people out of their wheelchairs, out of their beds, and into wheelchairs. They soon got bows and arrows into their hands. His ideas that low body temperatures were counteracted by sports started his change in philosophy of how to treat his patients. Sports also increased patients' physical and cardiorespiratory endurance and helped them overcome boredom. As Bob Patterson of the International Wheelchair and Amputee Sports Federation said, after injury, government focused an individual's mind on what they can do rather than regretting what they can no longer do. Through sport, Gutman gave back that person a will to live a full life with pride and self-respect. After Gutman found ways to treat sores, he turned to the problem of preventing them. He did this by early admission to his hospitals and prognosis. He often admitted patients newly diagnosed with the condition because they had a better chance of saving the patient. His results were significantly better than other hospitals and soon grew from just a few beds to around 200 in just a few years. seem to be beneficial to their health. In fact, it seems outright cruel. Are you okay? It's fine, Pace Lack. The results make it clear that this is a way to help them. Here, moving patients and allowing them to be physically mobile through this sort of treatment provides outstanding results. Come here. Great. 
These results, they're amazing. How is this even possible? Thank as, you. As you can see, I wrote some notes in there too. The correct first aid treatment of a person with a spinal cord injury may actually save his life or at least prevent his hopeless cripple. Thank you. I have a brilliant idea. Let us hold an archery competition. I have to choose 16 members from our hospital to compete against each other. It would be a fun way that the patients can move around and be motivated by competitive spirit. Sir, that's a great idea. In this final, I shall make an annual archery competition for those affected by spinal cord injuries. Hello, and welcome to the first Stoke Manable Games, our hospital for war veterans. I have acquired 14 men and two women to participate in an archery competition. Archers, line up along the grass. Your targets are 40 yards away from your station. Each one of you will have six arrows, and whoever has the highest score wins. Archers ready? Fire! Welcome to the second Stoke Manable Games. This year we've added new ball and six new teams. Welcome to the 12 Stoke Mandible Games and the first official Paralympic Games. This year we've hosted the most amount of athletes we've ever had. An amazing 400 competitors from over 23 countries around the world. These competitors can compete in sports including pair swimming, archery, basketball, snookering, and pair fencing. And a great shot from mine. Well, thank you all for coming to this competition. Due to an unorganized event and no scorekeepers, we did not get the chance to tell you that you are a gold medalist. Did I just hear you correctly? I, Margaret Mudd, just won a gold medal? Absolutely. Congratulations. Finally, the Paralympics are open to athletes of all disabilities. Thanks for Sir Ludwig Gutman, our dreams of becoming world-class athletes and doing something we enjoy has come true. In 2012, Mann was chosen to light the London Cauldron at the Olympic Games. Gutman originally created the Games as a place where people could rehabilitate, but it would soon break the barriers of stigma for those with disabilities, as we can see that Mann and many others were accepted into society and prided for their accomplishments. I felt very, very proud to be part of such a huge movement. From a small beginning in the simple days to seeing what had become with such large teams was a marvelous feeling. If I could say anything to Sir Ludwig Gutman, it would be thank you. Before he did his rehab work at Stoke Mandeville, if someone broke their back or neck, they were, they were just left in the hospital to die. It was that simple. Tanny Gray Thompson. For some time, the Paralympics went, were held in lower regard than the Olympics. But as time passed and public sentiments changed, Society saw the powers and capabilities of those affected by disabilities. This led to the 1988 Summer School Paralympics, which were held directly after the Olympic Games, in the same host city with the same facilities, showcasing the equal rights and acceptance of those with disabilities. This set a precedent that was followed for multiple years until it was formalized in an agreement between the International Olympic Committee and the International Paralympic Committee. As you can see, in such a short amount of time, the Paralympics have changed the social view towards those with disabilities in not just athletics and medicine, but in opportunities of mainstream society. The Paralympics went from a small gathering of British World War II veterans in 1960 to one of the largest international sporting events by the early 21st century. It hosted thousands of competitors from over 100 countries. Prevailing societal attitudes reflected the view that persons with disabilities were unhealthy, defective, and deviant. So society treated these people as objects of fear and pity, and they believed that such individuals were incapable of participating in or contributing to society, and that they must rely on welfare or charitable organizations. But a Lou Harris poll conducted in 1991 was positively revealing. 98% of individuals questioned believe that everyone should have an opportunity to participate in mainstream society. Furthermore, there was a strong sentiment toward increased employment of those with disabilities. 92% of individuals questioned believe that increased employment of those with disabilities would be economically beneficial toward society. The terminology used to describe those with disabilities has changed as well. Very old terms included idiot or imbecile, but in recent years, it has become important to emphasize the individual and their abilities, not the person's disability. 
As for your bar in this growing movement, we must all try to communicate that all people, including those with disabilities, have value and are equally respected and welcomed. Sir Ludwig Gutman created the Paralympics to integrate his patients into society at a time when society did its best to do the exact opposite. He never could have imagined the impacts of his actions, but the barriers broken have changed the world forever. Thank, Thank you. you. Bravo.